back on Course Record. I'm Michael Breed. Eric Van Royen has the best mustache on the PGA Tour, and earlier I had a chance to talk with him. And Eric, tell me, am I passing the test with the stash or what, big boy? Absolutely. That's A+. Plus. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that I thing you've got, because that thing is spectacular. How does, how does this come to be? I'm losing mine. How does that come to be? You know, um, it's usually just something I've done for Christmas over the years. And my grandfather had a big mustache, and I seem to have inherited the same gene. So I always have the beard, and I kind of shave it on Christmas Day, and, and this, uh, this bad boy seemed to have lingered just a little longer. I, I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were a Viking. I mean, this thing is beautiful. <laughs> right. Right. I don't know. Maybe there's some Viking heritage in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take this thing off. I can't wear it as well as you can wear it. So I want to talk about um, your, your year last year was a, that was a fun year to watch. I'm sure it wasn't a fun year to, to the start. But then all of a sudden, you win at Barracuda. You're, you're 139th in the FedEx Cup points list. And then you just... You just, the run just goes. Give me an idea of what, what took place with the win at Barracuda and then as you continue through the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, the win was, was spectacular. I was, I was in a tough spot. Like you said, I was outside the 125 to get into the playoffs. Um, first year on tour, so a lot of new stuff going on. Um, back's kind of against the wall, back into a corner, and, and I go out and win. It was, it was an absolutely spectacular week. And, you know, to then go from getting all the way to tour champs that that whole process was really just a cherry on top I almost I kind of played with just complete freedom because all of that was like I said the cherry on top you know prior to the Barracuda I had none of that so um, I played some fantastic golf for that stretch and it was an, a, it was an amazing time during the season what was there something that changed for you with your approach to your performance was it a a, a warm-up thing? Did you find something with your golf swing, putt a little bit better? Give me an idea of what turned the switch for you. Probably just more mental stuff, you know. Um, I think for me, I've kind of succeeded in, in all the levels and, and tours that I've played on, you know, starting on the Sunshine Tour, then Challenge Tour, Europe, and then eventually getting here to the PJ Tour and really just a sense of um, feeling like damn this is this is the greatest players on the planet I now need to compete and you almost have a sense that you need to do something special in order to compete here and and it took me a long time to realize that you know my game's good enough and um, I started working with a sports psychologist about two weeks prior to Barracuda and um, you know things click the pots all of a sudden start going down and and away you go well, I know there's a lot of people that are watching this when they get a chance to figure out how they, they could do a better job with their minds. So yeah. is there something that when you're talking with your sports psychologist that all of a sudden changed for you? Did the game just, did you kind of let the game come to you instead of uh, mm -hmm. forcing something? What, what was that mental yeah. hurdle that you jumped? Yeah, um, I, I would make it so complicated, you know, feeling like I've got, when you've got a wedge in your hand, well, you have to stop it at 10 feet because that's what the guys out here do. And so it just adds all that weight. And, you know, you have a six footer. Well, you got to make that because that's what the best in the world do. And before you know it, you've made this game so complicated. Um, and I think you said it perfectly. The, the art is to let it come to you. Um, and when I made peace with that in Barracuda, I played, I played fantastic golf for that next um, sort of six to eight weeks. And, and really now, as it bleeds into this year, it's a, it's a very nice mm -hmm. year. Uh, and, and the recent play has been fantastic. Tied 13th at the players uh, at RBC. You had a, had a really, I mean, you put yourself in a position there um, yeah. and finished tied 10th there. Give me an idea of, is this a continuation of what happened at the end of last year? Or is it, is it you know what, I just feel comfortable out here on the PGA Tour now, um, and I'm just playing golf. Yeah, I think it's a combination of everything. You know, um, I think if you go look at the stats, they'll show that, that my putting's been pretty poor. Um, so the last month, we've really addressed that. And, you know, the rest of the game has been beautiful. Um, but finishing it off always comes down to putting. And um, players, I did great. Um, and then RBC last week, the reason I was where I was, I think I was leading with nine holes to go, was purely because the putting was where I know it, it, it should be and it can be. So um, that was really the difference. You know, I. I 
you know, you can hindsight, obviously 2020, but I really feel like I, sh I sh could have won that tournament. Um, should have, it may be a different story, but I had it sort of right at my fingertips and I just didn't get it done on the back nine. But I feel like really trending going into sort of the summer here coming up. Have you augmented your practice time now to pay a little bit more attention to the putting? Is this something at home that you're doing drills or what, what is what is the what is it that you have to do in order for you to um, get your putting to the level of your ball striking? Yeah, I think it's a matter of evaluating smartly and then um, just paying attention to the things that are lacking. You know, I was I made it quite simple sort of um, midway through last year where I had a mat and I had, we call them my pillars. I had these three or four pillars that I would do every day. And all of a sudden I go win Barracuda and I play, some, you know, I'm one of the best players on the planet pretty much for two months. And then things kind of start going downhill again. It's like, well, that's because I've been doing these pillars and, but I haven't been paying attention to, to the whole picture, you know, meaning like the skills, for example, roll percentage, center strike, speed, you know, distance control is a big one with putting, obviously knowing how to match your line and speed. Um, and so for the last month, we've started paying attention to those things again. Um, distance control was one thing that I was lacking. And, you know, if you don't have the correct speed, it's really hard to match uh, the picture you're seeing on the green. Um, so about a month ago, I went to see John Graham. We did a lesson with him. My coach was involved, my coach Doug Wood, and um, it was a great day. And we, we took away a few things and we've just been chipping away at it. And obviously, RBC, you can see the, the fruits of that coming through. Let's talk a little bit about statistics because it's very easy to get caught up in the statistics, which can lead you yeah. right back down to that, that path of kind of forcing things. Are you a statistic-oriented guy? Do you try to use it but not dive into it? How, how do you use statistics to help you improve? I think it's important to uh, at least have someone that does that for you um, because at some point, you know, let's say you're not getting the job done, well, something's going to stick out, whether it's your short game, or driving accuracy, whatever the case might be. And, and if you don't know what that is, you don't really know how to plan and, and you know, make a plan for the future. So I use it. Um, my coach mainly looks at it and, you know, we'll talk and if there's something that stands out, like for example, if there's a pattern over a two month period, um, we'll address it and, and go from there. Let's talk about goals. Are you a goal oriented guy? And then to that end, if you are, what kind of goals do you have for yourself for the remaining part of, of uh, the year? Winning again on the PJ Tour is, is always front and center of my mind. And, you know, I'm into everything this year, all the majors, all the WGCs, I think. Um, starting to contend in the majors, obviously done now well at the RBC and trying to trying to have that bleed into major championships, being there in the back line to have a chance to win. That's really the next step for me. And I think it's just important, the more times you can throw your name in the hat, um, you never know when, when it's going to bite. So that's really the goal for me. One of the things that, that's obviously hanging out there is the President's Cup. You're in pretty good shape right now. Um, I would imagine this would be one of those goals that you might not write yeah. down, but at the same time, it's got to be in front and center of your mind. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've had a bunch of dinners together with all the guys, um, you know, all the prospective players and Trevor's been there. And um, with him being a fellow South African, it would be an incredible honor to play. And, you know, we're all, I think, young guys. We're all really hungry to, to win the President's Cup. And obviously we'd make history if we do that here on U.S. soil. So um, that's definitely front and center of my mind as well. And, and when you look at, at making that team, and I would imagine, because we've seen something like what happened with Scotty Scheffler, where he plays his way onto the, in, into position to be chosen to be a part of that Ryder Cup team, and then all of a sudden he has that great success, and then it leads to a, a, a torrid run for a period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, six weeks, unbelievable performance. D do yeah. you look at the President's Cup as something like that that can give you that sort of added confidence to believe, yeah, I could not just win once, but win multiple times in a calendar year on the PGA Tour as a result of that that uh, participation in, in such a big event? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, being selected for a team like that obviously shows that, that you're one of the best players um, in the world, obviously internationally. Um, and if you can use that as a springboard, you know, I've, look, I've never competed in a, in a team event like that, but everyone always talks about 
how much different it is, how, how different the pressure is that you feel because you're now not just representing yourself. So if you can learn in that situation and let's say, for example, beat one of the top US guys, I think they can only give you confidence to sort of springboard yourself into the next level. All right, so I, I got to end with this because I know that this is something that's near and dear to your heart, the maintenance for the, the mustache. What's the proper maintenance and then what's been the sort of the, the uh, fan reception to this beautiful thing? Well, Pat and Kaziah was growing a the mustache there for a while and, and he told me, he was like, damn, man, can you please shave it just so I can feel okay about myself? <laughs> so <laughs> um, the general reception has been good, you know, um, like multiple times around you'd hear people yelling, you know, great mustache or best stash on tour, stuff like that. So I don't know, we're having, we're having some fun with it. My wife is definitely on the flip side of the fence where she wants the beard back. But um, so th there's probably a shelf life to this to this thing. But, you know, for now, I think it's here to stay. If you win with the stash, does it stay or does it go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, uh, let's win first and then we'll have this chat again. <laughs> I love it. All right. I'll tell you what. After you win, you coming back on. We'll talk about the stash. I got okay? you. Got it. That's Eric, the you're the best. Deal. Thank you so much for the time. Continue good fortune.